Hello everybody, I'm Widu, welcome back to my channel and to my new cosplay workshop! It has been a while since the last video and uh, that is because I have been moving houses and I have finally gotten my new setup right here and it is so much more spacious, right? I don't know if you guys can notice in the camera but there is so much more space here. Um, and exciting thing uh, that happened during the move as well is that I started a new project and it's kind of um, taking shape right here in the form of a paper pattern and also some leather work that has uh, started to take form. Uh, so I'm super excited about that. I will actually make a video um, with those progress and those tutorials really soon. I've got all the footage, just need to uh, put some voiceovers and edit it together. I've just been super busy and also super lazy. So, sorry, uh, but today I'm going to do a uh, quick Q&A with your questions that you guys have sent to me on Instagram. I've got them actually on a phone here right now. I have not read through any of the questions yet. I just wanted to be super candid about this one. Um, the questions have like no off limits, so I don't actually know what you guys are going to ask me, but I'm going to look through them and choose the top 10 questions to answer for you guys and hopefully I'll be able to uh, share with you guys something you didn't know already about me or maybe some uh, cosplay advice that you guys wanted or maybe even some insight into cosplaying and balancing that out with everything um, that might be useful for you or might be just interesting to you in general. Um, so I hope I hope that's going to be the case. I don't know what you guys are going to ask me. It's just a mystery screen here right now. Uh, so without further ado, here we go. Before we begin, let me do a really quick plug to my website, akwudu.com, where you can find my cosplay books and patterns, gallery and a free tutorial archive, and my Patreon. Pledge any amount you like and automatically get any tutorials and patterns that come out of a project and access videos early. Thanks for letting me plug. Enjoy the video! Question 1 is... How did you get started with cosplay? So, um... I used to be a manga artist, or like a fan artist, back when I was little, uh, when I was in high school. And I would spend all of my time, even my study time, just drawing my own manga. And it was a dream of mine to become a mangaka until I realized how underpaid and overworked they are. <laughs> um, and then um, during that time in school, um, my fellow weep friends um, introduced me to this wacky thing called anime conventions. And I was like, what the hell is that? So they took me to one. Uh, where I pretty much spent the entire weekend on the doodle table, so it was just like this fan art drawing competition table, so I pretty much just spent my entire day just drawing at a table. <laughs> it was such, such a waste of the convention experience, but that's what I did. There was a fan art table, and I spent all of my time there. Uh, but occasionally when I looked up, there would be something happening on the stage and then I noticed that there were people dressed up as their favorite characters and performing on stage and I was like oh that's weird <laughs> and then I and then and then the following year I was like you know what I want to try that weird thing that people are doing on stage so so I gave it a go I did not know how to sew I didn't know that people make their own costumes. I thought everything was bought, but obviously I'm pretty wrong. Um, so the first cosplay that I ever did was uh, Shinji Ikari from Evangelion. So if you guys are familiar with Shinji, he's literally just like a school uniform shirt with a belt and an undershirt and trousers. So I was like, yeah, my school uniform looks like that. I could get a haircut to look like Shinji. <laughs> so I did Shinji, but I took it a little bit further because um, was Evangelion was my favorite anime back then because, you know, it was so depressing and I was an emo kid. Um, so I actually took up playing the cello. Uh, it's, the duh, 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 duh. it's very famous. Every, every piece of media uses it. It's overused. But uh, I learned that sweet specifically to go on stage and perform and the crowd like just went wild and I was like oh my god what is all this attention I want more <laughs> and that's how I got addicted to, 
doing uh, cosplay performances. And then two years after that, I decided that I wanted to do other characters um, that, you know, couldn't be put together with a wardrobe put together. So uh, I started cosplaying other things and started learning how to uh, sew and how to use, you know, power tools to make props and everything. So it all started with Shinji and then it branched out as I wanted to make more crazy characters. Uh, so that's my origin story. Um, this was back, way back in 2006. So it's a grand old 15 years ago and I've been cosplaying ever since and I've never loved it more. And here I am now. Question number two, how are your days in Canada? Is it easier to co do cosplay compared to Australia? Um, <laughs> so I moved to Canada from all the way down under from Australia about six, oh wow, okay, it's nine months ago now, it's August now, I moved here in November. So it's been nine months since settling in, in Vancouver, Canada, um, and I love it here. Um, the people are nice, the, the area that I'm in is really vibrant, and I, I love my surroundings. Skating here is much easier because there's more rinks and it's cheaper. Um, in terms of cosplay, um, it's around the same because all of my supplies come from the same people. I use my Lumens products and my Artwix products. Plug, 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 sponsored. Um, but um, otherwise, like fabric shopping is about the same, just like a local fabric shop. And um, just like prop making supplies are about the same. Hardware stores and dollar stores. Um, I will say though, you guys have a lot more dollar stores floating around. Here, it was like everywhere I walk is like another dollar store. So I'm just like, oh my God, so many cheap things. <laughs> um, in terms of like, is it easier to do cosplay here? I genuinely don't have an answer for you because I have been spending most of my time indoors and isolated because of the pandemic. Uh, so I haven't actually been able to connect with the local community yet. Sadly, um, most of my connections done with the cosplay community here in Canada have been online through Facebook groups. So a uh, special shout out to the Vancouver Cosplay Super Friends and also uh, Cosplay Connect groups that have been really friendly and welcoming me in, but I have not met anybody in person yet, so um, I can't really comment on that. But um, in general, life here in Canada has been really great. I have been actually supporting myself through um, creating cosplay and creating content for you guys solely. So um, this life that I am pursuing right now is actually possible because of you guys. So uh, thank you. Um, and thank you for all your support during the move and after the move and still supporting me. Um, so thank you guys for being here and making me possible. I'm going to keep trying to do my best and make this Canadian life work. Yeah. Question number three is... <laughs> have you drank water this week? <laughs> no. I am in a constant state of dehydration. That's probably why I'm so thirsty all the time. <laughs> so thanks for the reminder. I'm going to take a sip right now, just because of your question. This is alcohol. <laughs> so I don't think it counts. I promise I will drink some water this week and get myself hydrated so I'm not such a thirsty... <laughs> I'm not so thirsty all the time. Alright, um, so thank you for that water drinking reminder. Um, and the answer is I know <laughs> I have not drank water this week. It's always been just like cola. So um, yeah, I'm really bad at that. I will fix it. I promise. Uh, question number four is what is your favorite superpower? Um, oh wow, okay, so if I had to uh, choose, it's kind of a tie between two. It would either be super speed or time manipulation. But then they're kind of, they're kind of related 
see because if you travel towards the speed of light you start to influence so time starts to flow differently for you so that it's kind of on the same line isn't it um the reason i want to do that is because you know if i have super speed i could sleep in <laughs> and i could make it to a convention <laughs> <laughs> with like just like a second of time and I wouldn't have to um, worry about travel time or if I have super speed I can just like maybe just like run so fast that I don't sink into the ocean and I can just like run back to Australia to visit my family but then with time manipulation my reasoning is like exactly the same like if I stop time I can sleep more and it's like if I stop time I can have more time to get ready for a convention because I take forever and if I stop time I can you know maybe stop time and then like travel all the way back to Australia <laughs> visit my family I don't know um, um, I, I just feel like that would be a really convenient power to have because there, if, if there is um, a resource that I think there's not enough for me, it definitely is time. Question number five is, oh, this is a good one. How do you choose a series or content to uh, do for competition skits? So obviously for cosplay competitions that are, you know, higher level, uh, they usually require a skit. Um, slash performance and um, I always have time choosing a series or like appropriate costumes slash characters for um, a, a performance that I think would be competition worthy uh, and there are a few ways that I could go about it sometimes I come up with the performance idea first and then look for um, the series or a game an anime or a manga that would suit that performance idea. So this kind of approach usually um, usually involves like martial arts or maybe a dance kind of skit or maybe some even you know stage tricks, magic trick or lighting tricks, that kind of thing. Um, that kind of uh, performance usually. Uh, comes to being from an idea of the performance first and then you find an appropriate um, source material for it. Uh, the other approach that I have done is um, look for competition worthy costumes first um, because obviously if you're going to enter a car competition you have to make your costume right so and to make your costume you have to spend a lot of time on that project so you you have to make sure that what you're making you're going to be <laughs> okay with spending time on for you know months on end so actually my preferred approach would be to do um the costume selection first so i'll select a character or a series that have really cool designs that I really want to do um, and then try to make a performance out of that uh, and I would brainstorm you know I would brainstorm a couple of options from the costume first approach and then I would brainstorm a couple of options from the performance approach first and then like there would be all these options um, for example, uh, when Kay and I were considering um, World Cosplay Summit, we had uh, Monster Hunter on on the on the brainstorming board, and the Monster Hunter one was obviously for you know the costume first. Like we were interested in making those costumes and interested in making something dynamic. Um, to perform in and do a dynamic performance in those costumes and then we also had something um, quite you know quite theatery like kind of Odin sphere I think we had that on the table somehow um, we had another series that I forgot about but it was more towards the we have an, a performance idea for this series and this is the kind of character that would be appropriate for this kind of performance um, but and then we would have all of these options on the table and then we would decide which one had was more all-rounded 
you know. So um, I would personally never choose a um, an option that would have a really really good performance, but then not a very impressive costume because that because not having an impressive costume for a competition just drops my interest level. So no matter how good the performance is, if the costume isn't interesting to make, then I would just lose interest. On the other hand, I would also never choose like a really epic costume that I can't perform in if a performance is required, because what's the point? Um, so we'll have all of these options with, you know, performance, costume, performance, costume, and then there's a costume, performance, and then like we would just choose the one that is the most balanced. Um, because if you have, you know, an impressive costume with an impressive performance, you put that together, even though you might not be the most impressive costume-wise out of the group, or you might not be the most impressive costume-wise out of the group, uh, your combined score could take you up to the win. So if winning a competition is your goal, then you, I would really suggest, um, you know, considering lots and lots of options and picking an all-rounder one so you can get points where you can. I hope that helps. That was very long-winded. I hope it made sense, um, but that's my thought process. I really hope it helped. Question number six is, what's the best way to cut leather for a clean look? So um, there are lots of different ways you could cut leather. You could even just use a pair of scissors um, if the leather is thin and soft enough. But for me, I always like to use a super sharp craft scalpel. And also I've got a little tool here called a bevel edger. So I'm just going to do a quick demonstration with one of my spare scraps. Alright, here's my little piece of leather, here's my scalpel, and here's my little bevel edger. And I usually like to, whatever I do, um, draw you know, the shape that I want to cut onto the leather first with a pencil. Uh, a pencil because it can be erased and because it's faint and it's not permanent. So once I've got my guideline done in pencil, I'll just take my trusty craft scalpel, sharper the better, and just cut along it like this. Sometimes the first cut isn't going to cut all the way through, so you might have to do another cut. Slow and steady makes a nice clean cut, like so. And then after you've done the cut, if you want to be nice and fancy, you can take the edge off using an edge beveler. And what you do is you press it onto the corner of the surface, and then you just press and push keeping the angle nice and consistent. Ta-da! That is a nice beveled edge. That's nice and clean. Yay! So that's how I like to cut my leather. Hope that helps. Question number seven is, what is one franchise that you have yet to cosplay from but would love to? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I have so many series that I love that I haven't cosplayed from yet. Uh, mainly sometimes because I miss the hype and it's like too late to do it now. Or whether I've just like been really lazy and <laughs> just kind of lost interest before I actually got to do the cosplay. So some of those franchises are Attack on Titan. I really still want to do Eren. Um, I still really want to make one of those uh, 3D maneuver gear things and have like gas spilling out of my butt. Um, another one would be the Fate franchise. I really want to do uh, Saber. 
um, or like action, saber saber with, with the dress and everything. Um, or Lanza, or Archer, or even Gilgatrash. Hate him, but I love his costume. <laughs> so um, that is that is uh, just a couple of franchises that I would cosplay from, but I have yet to. Um, I also, I might get a little bit of hate from this, but like my knowledge of fate is limited to <laughs> the series that have Kajira Yuki music and Kalafina music. So that is pretty much just Fate Zero and the Fate Stay Night kind of trio. Um, Stay Night, Unlimited Blade Works, and, um, and uh, Heaven's Feel. Um, but Stay Night doesn't have Kajira Yuki, so like it's kind of uh, off to the side for me. So it's like Zero, Heaven's Feel, and Unlimited Blade Works, and it's like that's the depth of my knowledge of the Fate universe. Uh, so my choices are going to be from within that <laughs> limited portion of the Fate extended universe. Um, so yeah. I would really want to cosplay from that shallow choice of servants or people or masters um, really soon, really soon. Stay tuned, stay tuned. I will, I will do it soon, I promise. Question number eight is, what was the most difficult cosplay you have ever made thus far? Um, I would have to say, like, I would really love to say that it was my Azura Star-Lord from Monster Hunter World because that's the one that won me the um, World Cosplay Summit 2019 title with K. But like although technically the um, the craftsmanship on this Azura Star Lord armor is probably the best of all of my work, but like the most difficult um, I would probably have to say my Bahamut from Final Fantasy X purely for the logistics of it because I decided to make it like almost life-size compared to the giant Yuna that I had to cosplay it with. <clears throat> so my best friend Taff um, <laughs> cosplayed Yuna with me when I was making Bahamut and she is taller than me. She's freaking giant. So I decided I wanted to be proportional to my summoner. So that means I have to be even more ginormous. <laughs> so that meant, you know, th that thing had a wingspan of like four meters and the top of the tip of its wings was like three and a half meters. The thing was bigger than the apartment that we were living in, okay? So um, the logistics of putting it on, um, making it in a space that was smaller than the costume itself, transporting it and like, and getting it photographed and taking videos of it, it's like all of it, all of it was a pain because of the sheer, you know, size of it um but in terms of like technical difficulty it would be azura star lord from uh monster hunter world for world cosplay summit yeah so it's like kind of a two answer thing but yeah most difficult is definitely bahamut that thing cost me so much suffering so much <laughs> so much ptsd thinking about it right now but yeah I hope you enjoyed that answer. Next! Okay, question number nine. This is <laughs> How horny is the WCS 2019 costume? As in, how many horns does it have? <laughs> so, um, there, there are lots of horns on that thing. Um, and I definitely remember making a lot more horns than I needed to for it. Um, realistically, I think, I'm just like trying to count it right now. It's like 1, 2, 3 times 4, 12, 24, 24 plus 9, so 31, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then it's plus 16, okay, 30, 31 plus 16, that's about, oh, 31 plus 16 is uh, 47, um, 47, and then, and then just like a bunch more on the body, uh, totaling to about 120, that's my rough guess, that's my rough guess because I don't want to just like 
pull it out of my luggage and count them. But um, I definitely made more horns, um, like over 200 horns in a batch because um, because the horn part of the um, of the costume is definitely the more fragile parts. So like the most of the costume is actually made of leather. And then the ornamental parts, which is the horns, would be made from foam and foam clay. So they are the most vulnerable parts. Um, and because there are so much of them, like the sheer number of them on the costume, um, I knew that I would have to have replacement horns in case, you know, uh, when we're bashing each other up on stage, they're about they're going to fall off. Um, and also because uh, during one of the rounds um, on on the preliminary road to the finals, we had to do a catwalk in which if you drop anything on stage, including anything that breaks off, or if you do a costume change and then you leave it on stage, it's a five point deduction. So it's like a huge deduction for leaving anything on stage. And we had so many little horns that we didn't want to risk dropping any of them on stage. So what did we do? Before we went on stage, we fucking ripped them off individually so that we had no horns on our costume to rip, to like um, eliminate the risk of getting any deductions. So um, that is why uh, during the production stage of the costume, I made over 200 horns but in actual fact, there is probably only a hundred and something horns on the costume. And the rest is like a spare batch to replace them for whatever purpose. Uh, whether it is um, damage from the performance or whether it is damage from us ripping it off ourselves. So that is how horny that costume is. Last question, question number 10. Any more Yuri on Ice cosplays to go with the awesome skating? You are doing amazing, by the way. Thank you so much. I am actually enjoying uh, learning skating so much as an adult, and um, I'm actually really, really happy with my progress and being able to find a really cool coach here in Canada and having so many rings around me. Um, I've done a couple of Victors uh, so far. But uh, to answer your question, yes, now that I am a Canadian now, <laughs> I feel like I am obligated to do JJ. <laughs> so um, even, even if I freaking hate JJ, um, <laughs> I think I'm obligated to do the Canadian character from that show. And that is JJ. And um, I do have the fabrics for him already. Um, and I do have performance ideas, video ideas, and everything for him. Um, and maybe hopefully during this process, I will like his character a little bit better. <laughs> so yeah, JJ style coming to you really soon. <laughs> and uh, that is all the questions I have time for this time. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Uh, hit a like and subscribe if you did. If you missed out on this Q&A, don't worry, we will do another one in the near future. Just submit your question next time. Um, as per usual, thank you so much to my supporters on Patreon, with a special thanks to Chad, Just Believe, Senery, Anamessa, Sylvia, and April. Um, I'll see you next time. In the meantime, stay crafty.